Hi there, Virgos. Welcome to your reading. So um, when I was shuffling out the spread, I have a, a very interest. I got an, a very interesting uh, series of images. Um, so the scene that I'm looking at is um, it seems almost like um, an Asian culture. So I don't it, it seems like it could be it could be Japanese, but I'm, I, I'm, I can't really say for certain. But um, I see this this man. He's wearing like a some type of a traditional um, wedding outfit. Okay, so he has a hat, and uh, he's on a bridge. And then on the like really close to him, about I don't know two meters in front of him is like his his bride. She's beautiful. She's got her head covered. She's wearing a, a red dress. And then right behind her, so he's by himself on one side, and there are like cherry blossoms. So it, I thought it could be Japanese, but I don't think it's Japanese. But anyways, um, so he's on one side by himself, and then uh, he's holding like a little gift basket or a little gift, a little present for his bride. And then the bride is like two feet in front of him, and he's uh, right behind her is her entire family her entire family, like her mom, her dad, her uncle, cousins, sisters, siblings, their children. It was just a lot of people. And so he's trying to, you know, walk two feet or two meters over to his bride. And then the, the family kind of intercepts and then they shake his hands and they tell him, you know, um, she likes this type of food so you make sure that you know you cook her this type of food and then the mom shakes his hand and then she leaves and then the dad comes up and then he goes um, uh, she she likes to do these extracurricular activities so make sure you take her to the movies blah 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 and then he leaves and then her sister comes up so it goes on and on and on and on and in the meantime the guy he just wants to take his bride home but, you know, there's this whole string of people. There's a whole string of expectations along with those people. And the, the image just kind of cuts out. So you never see the end where he actually, you know, come forward and, see, and, and takes his bride's hand and, and leads her away. So he's, that, that's what I'm seeing. So first of all, that whole theme is definitely showing up here in this spread. Okay, so the card that really stood out for me is this one, Interference. Okay, um, this deck is a little bit non-traditional. It's the Thoth deck. And funnily enough, this was gifted to me by a Virgo. So we have here the Eight of Swords. It's a situation where you feel very, very stuck and you don't know what to do. Okay, there are too many thoughts racing in your head because the, the Sword of Suit uh, I'm, the the suit of swords, excuse me, is all about being stuck in a situation. There are too many thoughts, too many, um, too many things that we don't really have um, certainty over. We don't really have control over, and we feel like we don't have control over a situation. So, in the traditional rider weight deck, it's the woman. She's she's kind of blindfolded. She's tied up, and she's surrounded by swords. She can't really figure her way out of a situation because the thoughts that she has in her head regarding where do I go? How is it going to unfold? How is everything going to look like? All of those things are kind of like scaring her into making a decision. So that's what I feel is happening here. But the card specifically, it's interference. There is a situation here where you feel very emotionally compelled to do something but you're not really sure if that's the right thing for you. I see you very passionate about something, very emotionally invested in something. And you're just like, I really want to, you know, um, and you know, Virgos, you guys are really, really cautious by nature. You guys are very methodical by nature and you mold things over over and over and over and over again before you make a decision. So I feel like there's something that's really tugging or pulling at your heartstrings. It's like you have an emotional response to a situation. You don't know why you do, and that is exactly why you don't trust it. 
And I feel for some of you, this could be a love situation where you are emotionally just very compelled and drawn and magnetically, you know, pulled towards another person. There's no rhyme or reason for it. And that's why you don't trust it. I feel like for others of you, this is kind of like a new venture. This is something that you feel is going to be really emotionally fulfilling for you. It could be a new voyage. It could be a new journey. But I almost feel like it's a situation where you're emotionally pulled towards something. Even though there are a lot of other people that might be telling you, no, don't go for it. It doesn't make sense. Or don't go for it. I don't see you doing it, Virgo. You know, they're telling you like, uh, that's not really you. And then you're just like, but who are you to tell me what's what's for me or what I should go for and so I feel like there's a lot of people in your environment giving you advice that might not be appropriate and they're they're doing it not in a way to um, undermine you they're trying to be helpful and they're trying to give you advice based on their perception of you okay based on everything that you've done in the past especially if you have been very very overly cautious if you have also you know kept a lot of things inside where you kind of you know go to work show a happy face but inside you might not feel emotionally uh happy you might be in a relationship where you're just like going through the motions, you know, doing your due diligence to be a good partner, to be a good mother, to be a good father, to maintain the relationship. And then people from the outside looking in, they see you as this pillar of stability and strength. And they're just like, oh, that's Virgo. And then the moment that you become impulsive because you're drawn towards something that is like emotionally just pulling you, they're just like, that's out of character for, for you, Virgo. So what they're saying in their defense is almost like they're giving you, based on their perception of you, based on their, their, their um, knowledge of you, they feel like you're behaving out of character or they feel like you're pursuing something in a very impulsive manner and they don't know why you're doing it and they feel like they should intercept or at least interfere in the situation and give the, you kind of like their assessment because they feel like you're doing something that is out of character. But I feel like from your end, like I said, you guys plan things really well. You guys mold things over before you take action. And so I feel like if it's something that's really emotionally, you're drawn to it and you're not one to act erratically maybe this is something for you to explore regardless of what other people are saying because what they're telling you i don't feel like it's appropriate okay uh, we know intuitively what's good for us and i also know as well that you know what's good for you you mold decisions over you guys are not impulsive and so if there is an unexplainable pull towards something explore it okay don't be so risk adverse that you're just like nah that, that that's not me I'm, I'm just gonna let it sit there and yet time and time again you keep thinking about it you keep keep like it, it keeps replaying in your mind it keeps popping up in your thoughts and you're just like why does it keep doing this it's because it needs to be explored so whatever the situation is um just imagine the scenario and imagine in your mind, if you have it in the palm of your hands, what is what does that look like? And then on the other hand, just imagine if you had to decline it, if you had to push it away, how is that gonna make you feel? Because I feel like you're conflicted and I feel like you know, you're know you also doing a lot of things based on what other people are expecting of you, which might not be the ideal situation for anybody uh, let alone a Virgo because you spend your whole life bending over backwards for other people Because you guys are very kind. You don't want to hurt anybody but at the same time, I also feel like There's this um, it's almost like a savior complex. Okay, it's something that you're doing unintentionally But it's it's almost like you want to be of service to other people 
you want to be hopeful in all situations. And I also feel like a lot of that help needs to be directed at you, not because you need help, but a lot of that, that, that being of service, a lot of that help, a lot of that helpfulness and a lot of that meticulousness as well as thoughtfulness needs to be directed at yourself so that you're less harsh on yourself and so that you can start making decisions that make you happy without feeling guilty okay don't feel guilty for the things that bring us pleasure and especially don't feel guilty if you are drawn to something explore it regardless of what other people might say so that is going to um you know be different for the different people who are watching um i also feel as well there is a situation here where you are definitely definitely in love with somebody and um, I feel like there is a lot of um, external forces possibly other people that are you know of course interfering in the relationship so going back to that image that I saw um, the man wants to take his bride home he's in love with her therefore he married her and then he's like bombarded with all this this all these expectations all these social and cultural norms or like the the people and just their expectations of him it's almost like he can't catch a break and that's what i feel is happening for you guys um you want to just you know just be you you want to just just exist you want to just do whatever makes you happy but there are so many other people that i feel that you feel are dependent on you there are so many people that are coming to you and like needing your help needing you to troubleshoot needing you to put out fires needing you to clean up their mess as well and if they're not f the people you love if they're not family if they're not your significant other if they're uh, not you know somebody like children or pets that can't take care of themselves then it makes sense to take care of them and, and to clean up the mess and to, you know, make sure they're okay. But these are grown people. They need to learn to, you know, be self-sufficient. And so it's not really your place to come dash in every time there's a problem, okay? Learn to sit back a little bit. Learn to kind of like let people clean up their own mess. Learn to let people troubleshoot on their own. Learn to allow people to be self-sufficient, uh, okay? So that's what I'm feeling here. Um, I feel like for some of you, there is potentially an, uh, an air sign, an Aquarius, a Gemini, or a Libra. And I feel like... I feel like this is somebody who's very, very confused, who's very lost. They don't have a mentor. They don't have guidance. They don't have uh, a sense of direction as to, you know, it, it's like somebody who's like a buoy. A buoy? Uh, is that the... Yeah, that's the right word. It's the thing that, you know, it's made of styrofoam or it's hollow and it floats on the water. So it rise with the tide and then it'll sink with the low tide. It's somebody who's kind of adrift and just kind of aimless. Their life kind of meanders. Um, they, they go with the wind and you know, they're not overly ambitious. Um, I also feel like there's a lot of just internal struggles with this person. It's somebody who's lacking in direction. And I feel like over and over and over and over again, uh, you come to this person's rescue. This is your energy giving tribute, helping out, giving love and support and inspiration to the other person. And I feel like, you know, this is the month where they are going to have to come into their own senses and they are going to need to kind of like um, make decisions on their own. So don't enable this type of energy. Let them find their true path. Let them kind of um, lift themselves out of their own funk. Because I feel like you're like the tide. When you're rushing in that buoy, it, it floats up. It's elated. It's happy. And then when you're low, the tide is low. So I feel like somebody is depending on you to do this for them all the time. And... 
you might really care about this person and you do this for them all the time and I feel like I, I feel like it's taking a lot of your energy and this is something that might not be healthy okay um aside from that what I have here I have a really good card that basically indicates your hard work is gonna pay off and so I feel like you know that message is so generic but I'm sensing that there is a situation here where you might be in a position where you want to maintain the peace okay this is a really soft smooth um, this is knight of cups in this deck is actually the king of cups we don't have the kings in the uh, Thoth deck so this is actually the king of cups so I feel like you you know you, you want people to be jolly and happy and you want like harmony okay so for many of you you might be a little bit more on the Libra um, side like late degree Virgo almost like near the Libra uh, cusp you have you might have a lot of planets in Libra you want to maintain the peace you want people to be happy and you want everybody to get along and then I also feel like you know you don't express your needs and your wants and your opinions because you want you you might like be overly catering to following the herd and there is a, a situation here where you have some really good ideas seven of wands and you have to fight for your ideas okay and I do sense as well your ideas are going to be very well received and I feel like you kind of have we, we need to kind of stand behind our ideas own up to them as well as fight for them so that's where I feel like there's a situation coming in here where people are interfering telling you what to do or people are telling you like a course of action is not the right way to go and I feel like no matter what you don't even need to fight for it but you just need to stand by what you believe okay there is as well a situation possibly in the work environment seven of pentacles this is like a pentacle suit so usually work related situation that is not really bringing you passion anymore this card it looks like everything looks very dead everything looks very gray and everything looks just um, this is not a good place for you to be in in opposition to that we have seven of wands whereas this is all dark and somber this is all passion and ex like new passion and new excitement so I feel like you know we can swap one for the other if you don't want this there's something that's going to be coming into the picture you're going to be victorious you're going to fight for it and I feel like you are going to be able to possess this and exchange it for this situation okay um there is a little bit of a wait so i would say possibly about seven weeks time that is going to take us into let me see the march mm, yeah march time frame so we're barely we're not in february yet um so i would say the very last week of march there's something that is stuck in suspension here with the hangman and if it's a work situation a work project a work situation some type of money that's coming into the picture it is tax season too so for those who are filing early i feel like something is hung up a decision is hung up until the um late march time frame okay so um, the last thing that I do want to talk about here is um, I want to talk about your love life just a little bit. So let me talk about an air sign because once again, Knight of Swords, King of Swords, okay? The Knight of Swords in this deck, but it's the in the traditional deck, is the King of Swords. Air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra. And it's linked up here with the Tower. If you are dealing with an air sign, Aquarius, Gemini, and Libra, there's going to be a big argument coming into the picture here. And I feel accusatory energy is coming through from this person. I feel like they're, 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 they want some answers. They want you to make a decision. 
they want some answers as well as they want some type of a they feel like you might be keeping things from them okay so I, I do see if this is like a serious relationship partner there's going to be a serious disagreement where are we living where is this relationship going who's supposed to take care of this responsibility who's supposed to take care of that where were you who were you with so I see a lot of that energy coming through and um, in a way yes they are very aggressive but they're very truthful and they're very articulate so I feel as if they just want straightforward answers the way that they go about it might be you know accusatory might be just aggressive and I, I do sense that, you know, there, unfortunately, I feel like there's some validity to what they're saying. There might be some, it's, it's almost like they're, it, they're justified in why they are asking you these questions, okay? Um, if you are sharing space with this person, if you're sharing resources with this person, especially, you know, if you live together even, um, there will be discussions about responsibilities, what's fair and what's not, who's doing this, who's doing that, how are things getting divvied up, are things fair, who owns what, um, you know, like, where do I, it, it's almost like boundaries. So if you're sharing money, if you have the same joint account, it, it, you know, there might have been some big expenditures and they're like, what, why was this money withdrawn? What was, you know, what did you use it for? Or things like that. So I definitely feel some serious discussions, possibly even, you know, like a little bit of an argument, but their energy is coming in there. I feel like they're very truthful, very honest, but the way that they come at you, it might not be the softest okay they're very aggressive and I feel like there's some justification to their anger um, so that's what I'm sensing here I also feel like you know the the beginning message about family interfering that could also be a situation where the two of you you know might be dating and then there are other things that are interfering with the relationship the ways in which you're brought up one person could be very neat the other person could be extremely messy um, family cultural social expectations one person might be very traditional and the other person is like very um, eccentric okay so I feel like you know for example um, one person might be like okay let's raise our kids this way because your religion or values mean it, you know it's important to me and then the other person is all like no I don't really want to do that so I definitely see some very big jarring ideological differences affecting the relationship or even people meddling in the relationship but I feel like it's more family it's not so much third party things like that but I feel like it's more family okay and then on the other hand if you're dealing with a fire sign I have here the page of wands This is somebody, <laughs> wow, so Pisces, uh, I'm sorry, not Pisces, um, Leo, Sagittarius, Aries. This is somebody who's really, really, really interested in you. I feel like they will literally follow you to the end of the earth, okay? Wherever you go, they're like, okay, they're, they're, they're very spontaneous, but I feel like they carry a torch for you, a very big torch for you. They really, really like you, Virgos. Um, and then I'm also feeling like they probably will say something like this or will, you know, think it. Wherever you go, I'm going to follow you. And uh, as long as I have you, I'm happy. And I feel like they mean it. This is someone who's quite popular. I feel quite popular, love animals. They have a really, really sweet heart. Um, very honest, very truthful, um, passionate, and fiery. So you know they they're they're not like the most um, they're they're not conflict avoidant, and especially when they feel something, they feel the need to express it. 
and I feel like this is a person that will that will really 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 like they 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 will follow you to the end of the earth um I feel like they might have gotten out of a relationship where their love was taken for granted or they were with somebody who was quite controlling and in a weird way this person feels that you know control is love okay so they were in some type of a relationship where they were like under somebody else's control and now they're breaking free and i feel like they want to go for for forward with you i also feel like they like you they might be in the process of dumping somebody that they're with in order to move ahead with you and then i also feel if you're already in a relationship with this fire sign there's a lot of travel, a lot of movement. As a couple, the two of you are able to get a lot of success. Um, there might also be work interfering with your relationship here with this fire sign. So for example, uh, work is taking them somewhere else, far away from where you're living, or your work is taking you somewhere else, far from where they're living. So I feel like there's a little bit of a, a choice, decisions and things like that wedging itself in between your relationship but i feel with the fire sign it is very passionate with the air sign there is a lot of passion too there's a lot of love but there's also a lot of misunderstandings and a lot of frustration in this situation coming through from them and they want some answers that's what it feels like to me so let me see if there's anything else here I feel like um, it's like zero to 60. The people that you're dealing with, oh my gosh, they're so, um, they're, they're so unpredictable and they're so passionate. They go from zero to 60. So it could be this fire sign and this air sign. It's like they have really strong likes and dislikes. When they dislike something, they absolutely hate it. And then when they love something, they love it to death. There's very little, like, I'm seeing a spectrum, like just very broad spectrum, yes or no. And then I'm also seeing somebody going from zero to 60 really, really fast. And it's like that emotional moderation is not there when it comes to your partner. And so, you know, it's, it's not surprising to me that a lot of earth signs are drawn to a lot of very fiery, passionate um, people, mainly because you know you're kind of like that anchor for these people. But at the same time, um, just be careful about that. Okay, they're they're emotionally just very wound up. Um, I'm gonna leave it at that. Okay, Virgos, I hope the reading is helpful. I do wish you all the best. And before we go, I have an announcement I need to make. Um, for those of you who have been emailing me regarding private readings, unfortunately, I am no longer doing private readings. I do have somebody that I would highly recommend for you. She is a psychic. Her name is Bridget, and I have been using her services over the years, and she has been very accurate, extremely accurate for me. I've recommended her to my friends and my family members, and she has been very accurate with them. And so I'm recommending to you, my former clients and my subscribers and my viewers, if you are interested in booking a reading, I highly recommend her. Um, I put down the um, scheduling link to her. This is for her, okay? To her page. It's uh, in the description box below. So if you choose to get a reading for yourself or for somebody that, you know, needs a spiritual reading, I highly recommend her. So I wish you the best. I will be back in maybe two weeks time and then we can catch up then. Okay, take care.